What if I told you that the most advanced artificial intelligence in the world, the one that can write poetry, debug code, and even have conversations that feel deeply empathetic, has no more understanding of what it's saying than a parrot. We've all seen it. We've probably all tried it. You ask it a question, and it gives you a stunningly coherent, nuanced, and sometimes even beautiful answer. It feels like you're talking to something that gets it. It feels like there's a mind on the other side of the screen, a consciousness. The feeling is the source of our greatest hopes and our deepest fears about AI, and it's based on a complete illusion. The truth is that AI has no more feeling of loneliness than your calculator has pride in solving an equation. To truly understand the AI revolution we're all living through, we first have to unplug from the science fiction and separate fact from fantasy. Because what AI really is, is so much more interesting and in some ways so much more concerning than a simple thinking machine. And the biggest myth of all, the one that underpins everything, is this idea of a ghost in the machine. The most common myth is that AI is sentient, that it's conscious, that somewhere inside those silicon chips, a self-aware being is emerging. It's the plot of a hundred movies, from HAL 9000 to Skynet. But here's the reality. What we call AI today, especially large language models like ChatGPT, are essentially the most sophisticated prediction machines ever built. They aren't thinking, they are calculating. When you ask it to write a poem about loneliness, it doesn't tap into a reservoir of digital sorrow. Instead, its algorithm performs a lightning-fast statistical analysis. It's analyzed billions of sentences from all over the internet and from digitized books. It has learned that the word loneliness is statistically very likely to be found near words like shadow, echo, empty, and silent. It then weaves those words together in the most probable and grammatically correct sequence. The result feels creative and emotional to us, because it's mimicking the patterns of human emotion it learned from our own writing. Researchers have a fantastic name for this. They call these models stochastic parrots. They are brilliant mimics, able to repeat and remix human language in ways that sound intelligent. But they have zero underlying understanding of the concepts. They don't know what a mother is, they just know it's a word that often appears near love, care, and home. There is no subjective experience, no inner world, it's all just math an incredibly complex and powerful illusion of intelligence. But if these AI parrots are getting so good at mimicking human intelligence, at mimicking our jobs, what does that mean for our livelihoods? Are they coming for all of them? The fear of being replaced by a machine is not new. It's a story we've told ourselves since the Industrial Revolution. With every new technology, from the steam engine to the spreadsheet, the same panic arises. Mass unemployment is just around the corner. And now, with AI generating code, drafting legal documents, and creating marketing plans, that fear is louder than ever. The narrative is that AI is coming to take all of our jobs, rendering humanity obsolete. But this all or nothing view misses the entire point of technological evolution. The reality is far more nuanced. AI will absolutely displace some jobs, especially those that are highly repetitive and based on predictable data entry. But it's not a story of elimination. It's a story of transformation. For most of us, AI won't be a replacement. It will be a co-pilot. Think of a graphic designer who can now generate 100 initial concepts in minutes, freeing them up to focus on refining the best one. Think of a programmer whose AI assistant finds bugs in their code instantly, allowing them to build better software faster. Think of a doctor using an AI to analyze an MRI scan, giving them a second, data-driven opinion to help spot cancer earlier. This is augmentation, not replacement. It handles the grunt work so we can focus on the things humans do best, strategy, creativity, and complex problem solving. And just like the internet created jobs we couldn't have imagined in 1980, like social media manager or SEO specialist, the AI revolution is creating entirely new roles we're already seeing the rise of the prompt engineer, a person whose entire job is to know how to talk to AI to get the best results. The future of work isn't about competing with AI, it's about collaborating with it. The challenge isn't a future with no jobs, but a future that demands we learn new skills. Okay, so maybe AI won't take every job, but it will instead help us do them better. 
but that hinges on the AI being fair and making good decisions. And that brings us to one of the most dangerous myths of all, the idea that a machine is automatically objective. This myth is seductive because it promises a solution to one of humanity's oldest problems, our own prejudice. The thinking goes like this, humans are flawed, emotional, and biased. A machine, on the other hand, runs on pure logic and data. Therefore, if we let an AI make important decisions in things like hiring, loan applications, or even criminal justice, we can eliminate human bias and create a fairer world. It's a beautiful idea, and it is completely dangerously wrong. The most important rule in all of AI is this, garbage in, garbage out. An AI model is only as good and only as unbiased as the data it's trained on. And where does that data come from? It comes from our world, a world filled with decades of systemic, historical, and unconscious biases. The AI doesn't learn about the world from first principles. It learns from the data we give it. This isn't just a theory. A few years ago, Amazon had to scrap a brand new AI recruiting tool. They had trained it on the company's resumes from the previous 10 years. Because the tech industry has historically been male-dominated, the AI taught itself a simple pattern. Male candidates are preferable. It started penalizing resumes that included the word women's, like women's chess club captain. And it even downgraded graduates from two all-women's colleges. The AI didn't invent this bias. It learned it from us. It acted like a mirror, reflecting the biases already present in the data, and then it amplified them at scale. Far from being a magic bullet for fairness, AI can become a high-tech way to launder our prejudices, hiding them behind a veil of objective-sounding technology. So AI can be biased. It can have blind spots. But can it have vision? Can it have creativity? When an AI creates a stunning piece of art, is it actually creating? Or is it just engaging in the most sophisticated plagiarism in history? You've seen these images, art that seems to spring from a wild, alien imagination. You type a few words, a photorealistic astronaut riding a horse on Mars. And seconds later, a masterpiece appears. This has triggered a massive debate. Is this real creativity? Or is the AI just mashing together millions of images it was trained on, like a digital collage artist with a perfect memory? Many argue that since the AI has no intent, no life experience, and no inspiration, it can't be true art. It's just a remix. But this argument hinges on a very narrow definition of creativity. Let's reframe the question. When the camera was invented, painters cried foul. They said it wasn't art. It was just a mechanical reproduction of reality. When the synthesizer was invented, musicians said it wasn't real music. It lacked the soul of an acoustic instrument. In both cases, they were wrong. They weren't looking at the tool. They were looking at the art that came from it. The camera and the synthesizer became new mediums, new instruments in the hands of creative people. Generative AI is the same. It's a new tool, a powerful, strange, and exciting new paintbrush. The AI doesn't have the idea. The human does. The human types the prompt, curates the output, tweaks the details, and decides what has meaning. The AI is a collaborator, a partner, that can explore visual avenues a human might never have thought of. Human creativity has always been a form of remix, Artists learn from the masters who came before them. Musicians build on established scales and genres. AI just does it on a scale and at a speed we've never seen before. It's not a replacement for human creativity. It's a powerful extension of it. But all of this, the art, the job assistants, the complex models, it all feels like we're getting closer and closer to the ultimate sci-fi creation, a true thinking machine, an artificial general intelligence. So how far away are we, really? This is the myth that keeps people up at night. The Skynet scenario. The idea that we are just one breakthrough away from creating an artificial general intelligence, or AGI. This isn't just a smart program. This is an AI with the cognitive abilities of a human. One that can learn anything, reason abstractly, and potentially become self-aware and decide where in the way. The hype around AI right now makes it feel like AGI is just around the corner. The reality is, we are not even close. There's a massive difference between the AI we have today and the AGI of science fiction. Every single AI system on Earth today is what we call 
narrow AI. This means it is designed and trained to do one specific task, or a very limited set of tasks. The AI that can beat the world champion at the game of Go cannot write an email. The AI that generates stunning images cannot drive a car. It's a genius in its tiny, narrow lane and completely incompetent outside of it. To get from this narrow AI to a general intelligence would require solving some of the deepest mysteries of science. We would need to somehow code genuine common sense. The intuitive physics a toddler has that knows a ball will fall if you drop it. We'd need to create true curiosity, the ability to ask why without being told to. The consensus among most credible AI researchers is that AGI is, at a minimum, many decades away. Many are even skeptical it can ever be achieved at all. So a true Skynet is still firmly in the realm of science fiction. But that brings up a more practical concern. All this talk of complex models and neural networks makes it seem like AI is a world reserved for geniuses in lab coats. But what if the biggest myth isn't about what AI can do, but about who can use it? For decades, AI was locked away in university research labs and the R&D departments of giant tech companies. To work with it, you needed a PhD in computer science and a deep understanding of advanced mathematics. This has created a powerful lingering myth that AI is a tool for an elite few, that to use it or even understand it, you need to be a coder. This might have been true 10 years ago. It is completely false today. Think about it this way. You don't need to know how HTML and JavaScript work to build a website anymore. You use a simple visual tool. You don't need to be a graphic designer to create a nice social media post. You use a template on Canva. AI is heading in the exact same direction. The goal of the industry is to make AI accessible to everyone. The most powerful AI models are now being wrapped in simple, intuitive interfaces that anyone can use. AI is no longer a product you have to build. It's a feature you simply use. It's the smart reply in your Gmail. It's the magic eraser on your phone's camera that removes unwanted objects from a photo. In this new world, the most important skill isn't coding, it's domain expertise. A marketing expert who knows how to ask an AI the right questions to generate a campaign strategy will get far more value from it than a programmer who knows nothing about marketing. The power is shifting from the people who build the AI to the people who know how to creatively apply it. When we strip away the layers of science fiction, fear, and hype, we're left with a simple truth. AI isn't a creature. It isn't an alien mind or a budding consciousness. It's a mirror. It's a tool that reflects the data we feed it, including our brilliance and our biases. It's a tool that extends our own abilities augmenting our creativity, and handling our tedious work. It's a technology that is rapidly becoming accessible to all of us, not just the experts. The future of AI isn't a battle of humans versus machines. The real conversation, the important one, is about how we, the humans, choose to wield this incredibly powerful new tool. The most pressing questions aren't about what the AI will decide to do, but about what we will decide to do with it. And understanding the reality of what it is and what it isn't is the only place to start. If you enjoyed this look into the reality of AI, consider subscribing for more deep dives into the technology shaping our world. Thanks for watching.